Hello there guys, my name is Dominic and today I'll be using what is known as a power module over here to fix this motherboard. This motherboard is from a 32 inch Telefunken TV. I don't have the TV with me now, I only have this board. This is what is known as a hybrid motherboard because it incorporates the power board with the motherboard. The motherboard is at the bottom, the power board is at the top. That's why you can see like big smoothing capacitors and RCA jacks and HDMI ports on the other side of this motherboard. But first, let's take a look at the power module. Now, this is the power module that I'll be using. You just need to solder these three points and then you fix this big switching IC to a metallic surface on the television. Now, this is the user manual of the power module. Now, before I start, this is not a tutorial. I'm not showing you how to do it. I'm making this video for entertainment purposes only. When you work with electricity, there's a big risk of electric shock and burning down your house or your workshop. So beware. So let's start. So this is my multimeter and I'm using what is known as the beeper test. Basically, when you touch the leads, it shows that there is a connection. Now, in some cases you want a connection and in some cases you don't want a connection. For example, these diodes, you definitely don't want a short circuit like that. Short circuit. There's another short circuit over there. And another short circuit. So I believe this short circuit, which I believe is also present at the capacitor leads over here, is being brought about by this switching IC. As you can see, someone actually tried to fix this motherboard and they failed. And this is the other evidence that someone actually tried to fix this motherboard. You can see the copper tracts are all worn out. The first rule of electronics repair is never replace the fuse when the fuse is broken. There's a reason why the fuse breaks. So if you replace the fuse with that short circuit, it usually burns these leads together with your fuse. So I believe this short circuit is being brought about by this switching I see over here. I have short circuit on all three leads. Now I'm going to remove that and see if the short circuit will end at this point and at this point. Now this is the IC that I'm checking on on my phone right now. And you can see that this IC is actually a 650 volt super junction power MOSFET. So this is a MOSFET and I believe it's burnt. I'm going to remove it and in its place, I'm going to replace it with this power module. It's cheaper and easier to buy this than to buy this. I've also checked on AliExpress and I haven't even seen this IC over here. Just search it over here. As you can see, I have MOSFETs, the yes, but that's not the number that I typed at the top over here. To reduce all that hassle, you just buy a power module. So now that I have removed the switching IC, which is this over here, let's check if the short circuit has actually ended. Seems like the short circuit is still present. Also present on the capacitor leads. But the short circuit has ended on the MOSFET leads over here. You remember I had a three-way short circuit over here. So there's still something else with a short circuit. So that's what you're going to check next and fix it. And I will start by removing the diodes. I'm just going to remove only one leg from each diode and then test the short circuit again. So I've just unsoldered one leg of each diode and so let's check if the short circuit still persists. So there's no short circuit over there. That diode 
has a short circuit that diode has a short circuit and that diode has a short circuit what about the capacitor leads the short from the capacitor leads is gone so first i just need to replace all four of these diodes even though the first one seems to not have a short circuit i'm just going to replace the whole set so this is the diode that i have just removed this is the rl 207g and i'm replacing it with this diode over here this is the in 4007 diode this is the data sheet for the rl 207g now if i take a look at my replacement diode over here the maximum average forward voltage is one amp and if I check for the other diode that I'm replacing, I can see that the maximum current is 2 amps. So I don't know if this will work. So this is my decision as for now. I'm just going to replace that diode with the IN 4007 diodes. I'm sure it will not draw a lot of current. This is just for testing. When I finally go to install this in the TV, if it works, then... I'm going to change these diodes. I have soldered all the diodes in place. Now let me just deal with this broken track over here. So these power supplies are usually differentiated by sides. You can see the hot side and the cold side. The hot side is where all the high voltages are. Over here you can measure close to 300 or more than 300 volts over here. You can get a very bad shock from here. The cold side usually deals with this lower voltages like 24 volts and below. Now you can see that in this other power board over here. This is from a 42 inch LG TV. This is where you connect the power supply and you can see there's a clear line over here. Anything inside this line can deliver a very bad shock. So this is the hot side and this is the cold side. The cold side, like I said, usually has very low voltages. You can see over here, <coughs> the highest voltage you can see over here is 24 volts. You can also see clearly the boundaries at the bottom. This is the hot side and this is the cold side, the lower voltages. Now this usually has three leads over here. You're supposed to connect the black lead to the negative side of the main smoothing capacitor which is this leg over here now the red side is supposed to be connected to the switching leg of the mosfet and to check that you usually check it from the switching side to the transformer so i've actually checked and this is the switching leg over here this is actually connected to the second leg of this transformer so let me show you in the light so this is the switching leg and you can see it's connected to this connector and it goes through this line this is that line and it's connected to the second leg of the transformer so i'm going to connect my red cable to this point over here as for the third leg you're supposed to connect it to the positive side of the optocoupler this is what is known as an optocoupler and this is a feedback mechanism between the hot and the cold side as you can see over here this is the optocoupler i supposed to connect it to the positive side so i must first of all trace where the positive side actually is and this is the data sheet of the el817 optocoupler this is what you can see over here and i'm going to connect it to the first leg over here the one with the dot on the actual component. You can see the component over here. That's the first leg, then number two, then number three, then number four at the top over there. So I'm going to connect my blue cable to this leg over here. And then the black wire to the negative side of the main smoothing capacitor. I 
and then the red cable is going to be connected to the main switching leg of the switching MOSFET. We saw that it's a second leg from the top, like that. So the other thing you're supposed to do is to make sure that this is actually turned to the minimum. So the only thing left is to connect to the power. But before I do that, I need to connect a dummy load over here between the fuse because I don't want sparks and the magic smoke to start flying from my circuit. Now let's check if the short circuits that were at the beginning of the video have disappeared. None on either diode. No short circuit between the leads of the smoothing capacitor. And no short circuit between the original switching MOSFET. If you ever see a fuse broken, never ever replace the fuse. So instead of the fuse, I'm going to use my dummy load over here, which is a 100 watt incandescent bulb over here. So I'm just going to solder it between the original fuse location. Originally, even the fuse in the plug was actually blown. So remember, I have turned the variable resistor to its minimum location. What I'm looking for is for a red light over here. So if everything works fine, I will have fixed this power board. So, but if there's anything wrong, if there's any short circuit still left, this bulb will light up very brightly. And you can see success. And finally the testing. I have already fixed the board to the TV and fixed the power module to the metal surface with a screw. Now watch the green arrow. That's the backlight turning on. Now to just check if the LCD panel is okay. And it is okay. Now I don't have the remote control for this model, so I'll have to order it on AliExpress. This TV only has one button and you can press it once to turn the TV on. You can long press it to enter the menu, but there's no other way of entering into the sub menu once you select the menu. That's it. Thank you for watching and goodbye.